The Unmanageables Present The Movement by Group 9. We would like to take this time to introduce our team. Tatiana. She was born in Albany and moved to the States when she was eight years old. She is working on her bachelor's in accounting, and she currently works for McKenzie & Co. consulting firm. Madison. She was born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She's a junior majoring in marketing, and she currently works at Intermezzo as well as BAM. Matthew. Matthew was born and raised in St. Pete, Florida. He's currently attending USF for his bachelor's in accounting, and he works for Wells, Hauser, and Schatzel, a public accounting and consulting firm in St. Petersburg. Emily was born and raised in Tampa, Florida. She is currently attending USF for her bachelor's degree in marketing, and she works in sales for a national pest control company. Julie, she was born in Columbus, Ohio. She is currently at USF to obtain her marketing degree. She is a national sales executive with experience in background screening. Jacob was born and raised in Florida. This is his first semester at USF and he's currently a supervisor for Mosaic Fertilizer Company. Introduction to our TV show. The goal of our TV show is to teach others about the concepts of management and how they can apply to a situation outside of an office setting. The setting of our show is in The Movement, a brewery that has recently been bought out by a new owner. The new owner brings in some fresh ideas in hopes of bringing in more customers as well as implementing new management techniques to eliminate unethical behavior. The new owner, Andrew, is challenged by the unethical routines already set in place from a longtime employee of the movement, Mike. A part-time employee, Sky, also faces an ethical dilemma when it comes to providing feedback on unethical behaviors she has observed. Andrew demonstrates strong leadership skills by including his employees in the decision-making process of enhancing the business. Andrew is a beer connoisseur. He loves to share his knowledge, recipes, and passion about beer to his employees and customers. He is deeply involved in the daily policies and procedures of the bar and likes to be aware of the entire work environment. He believes he should lead by example and have trust in his employees. He tries to conduct team meetings as often as possible and agrees to listen to his employees' opinions to help them feel like a part of the team, which in return will make the movement more successful. Andrew is a passionate manager. He wants to see the business succeed. He diligently works to ensure the movement is profitable and keeps a great reputation. He is an aggressive manager who can at times become upset when employees are not following procedure or not keeping up with the positive environment. Andrew is a stern manager and prefers employees that catch on quick and have an upbeat, proactive attitude. Mike is a full-time employee of the movement and a dedicated worker. He has a passion for beer and finds joy in going around the world to taste different beers. Mike has been working for the brewery for over 15 years and has seen the place go through two buyouts already. His abundance of beer knowledge brings in a large customer base, which makes him an asset that the brewery cannot afford to lose. His view of bringing in revenue is geared toward his social consensus of offering free tastings and extensive beer knowledge. Mike has developed a bounded rationality model when it comes to handling the bar during his shift or resolving any problems. He believes that he has a social responsibility to take care of his customers and friends in a way that they will choose the movement for a hangout and bring in other customers through word of mouth.
Sky has been working for the movement as a part-time bartender for a year while she is also in school. She enjoys hanging out at the movement even when she's not working, since it is the main hangout for her group of friends and even her family. Sky's passion for beer doesn't go beyond casual drinking during the weekends, but she focuses on interpersonal justice and maintains an upbeat personality while at work. Working and going to school full-time can be overwhelming for Skye, but she has shown her manager, Andrew, transparency on when she can work and what days she needs off for exams. She has noticed that her colleague, Mike, has been handing out free beer to his friends, but Mike is her friend and he helped her get the job when she met him a year ago at the bar. Not knowing how to solve this ethical dilemma, Skye tried to stay out of it and assumed Andrew would figure it out on his own once he put up the cameras to monitor the beer output. Ed, short for Eduardo, is a well-known food truck chef and is known for making the best Mexican food in the city. He grew up in Mexico and always wanted to continue the family business of traditional Mexican food restaurants since he was a young boy. Now at the age of 61, he continues to serve his family's tasty homemade Mexican dishes from his food truck. Ed met Andrew at a local networking event shortly before he became the manager at the movement, and the two knew that they wanted to work with each other from the very beginning. The day after meeting each other, they arranged their current partnership, which allows Ed to sell his food in front of the movement's location. Ed's food truck brings in much needed traffic to the movement, and the movement gives the food truck a prime location in downtown to set up shop. Both parties have been completely satisfied with the partnership. Aaron was the movement's very first customer and has remained loyal to his new favorite brewery. Aaron is a VP at a local private equity firm located across the street from the movement. He enjoys stopping by the movement during his lunch break to talk to his childhood friend Mike and have a drink to unwind from his stressful job. Aaron is extremely extroverted and charismatic, and everyone at the brewery seems to enjoy his company except for Andrew. Aaron really appreciates the free drinks Mike serves him almost daily, and he frequently tells all his coworkers that the movement is the best brewery in town. In the beginning of this show, we get to see how Andrew organizes his staff each day and how he plans out his daily specials. Andrew is going through the finances of the past month and notices a discrepancy in the books. The units sold and revenue generated isn't lining up, and this is concerning to him. He decides that he needs to install cameras so he can watch his employees enter in every sale at the register. He hopes to not find any of his employees being unethical, but he needs to get to the bottom of this issue and take necessary actions. If it ends up being a complete accident, he will have to organize a training session for his employees to be refreshed on how to enter in the sales correctly so this doesn't occur again. If he finds someone giving away free drinks, this will be a big ethical issue and Andrew will have to use the utilitarian approach and let the employees suffer the consequences of their actions. In attempts to control his operations and revenue of the movement, Andrew installs security cameras for minimal cost. Being it's a newly purchased establishment to Andrew, and with the recent innovation of cameras, his workers, Mike and Skye, think it's for the patrons and after our safety. That is, until Andrew's longtime friend, Eduardo, the food truck vendor, asks him the purpose of the cameras. Andrew nonchalantly explains the safety aspects and that his income didn't balance with the amount of drinks being consumed. Andrew wants to control operations and make them as efficient as possible. Sky, the part-time bartender, had noticed Mike giving out free drinks, but felt loyal to Mike. She was only working while in school, and her priorities were more concentrated on her studies than Andrew's business and her part-time job. Andrew reviews the footage to find that Mike is in fact giving out beer to patrons, especially his friend Aaron. Andrew must now confront his team and deal with either false truths or excuses of how that's how it's always been. Andrew must provide direction and coordination to ensure his business venture becomes profitable and maintains a good reputation. This must all be done while keeping the attitudes positive 
and providing his customers with a great experience. Realizing that he does in fact have an inventory control problem, Andrew knows he must take a very deliberate approach to addressing this issue. Rather than making any rash decisions, he decides to employ the classical decision-making model to maximize the movement's profits, keep employee morale high, and still offer a great experience to his customer base. After bouncing some ideas off of his friend Ed, who is very familiar with running a successful business, Andrew walks back to his office to jot down some ideas. Classical decision-making is a seven-step process. Step one, identifying decision situations. Mike is giving away free beer on a regular basis, which is starting to significantly impact the movement's profit margins. Step two, developing objectives and criteria. Andrew calculates the amount of revenue each keg of beer should generate based on the cost of the keg and the average number of beers poured from a keg. Step three, generating alternatives. Andrew could fire Mike, put Mike on probation, garnish Mike's wages, ban Aaron from the bar, accept that no bar rings up 100% of its drinks, host monthly sampling events when new kegs are tapped, or start free beef Fridays. Step four, analyzing alternatives. Although Andrew is disappointed in Mike, he realizes that he is a very strong bartender with a wealth of knowledge related to the industry and he draws in several regulars. He also knows he will eventually go out of business if he continues to allow free beer to be given out on a regular basis. He wants to draw in new business and entice people to try new beers, but not pour away his profits. Step five, selecting alternatives. Andrew decides to place Mike on probation, but admits to himself that there could be some benefits to occasionally offering free beer attract new customers, allow regulars to try things that they might otherwise not purchase, possibly create a demand for higher profit margin beers. He decides to offer a monthly sampling event during which customers can try up to three free five ounce beers when new kegs are tapped. Step six, implementing the decision. Andrew plans a staff meeting to discuss his de decision and schedules the first event. Step seven, monitoring and evaluating results. Andrew will monitor the movement's revenues over the next month leading up to the first event and assess the success or lack thereof of sampling event. After Andrew wrote down multiple ideas using the classical decision-making model, he decides to take action regarding the situation. In a very organized and structured way, Andrew continues to monitor the movement's revenues and keep track of inventory and sales. In order to do this, Andrew makes a document on Excel to record everything and has it done every Sunday morning before the brewery opens to, to prepare for the upcoming week. After consulting with the other employees at the movement, Andrew decides to start doing inventory with a different employee each time teaching them how it's properly done. With the process of inventory being organized, Andrew realizes this is a better system at keeping track of missing items and theft. At the end, Andrew ends Mike's probation and teaches him the new organization system at the movement. Andrew explains how Mike has one last chance to fix things and that if he's caught giving beer away for free again, he will have to be let go. Andrew also assigns Mike to organize the free beer event for the next week, which will hopefully attract new customers and future sales. Conclusions on management. Management starts here at the management level. Employees must be engaged and feel appreciated. Managers must, must learn to be flexible as every day cannot go as planned. Management needs to be effective in order for a business or a group of any type to run smoothly. Our recommendations. Don't wait till the last minute to get things done. Communicate with your group as often as possible. Assign tasks early in the week so everyone knows what needs to be completed. Ask for help if you're struggling with something. 
are reflections. Group projects are what you make of them. If you remain focused and positive, the course will seem like a breeze. Management comes in many different forms. Management members need to be decisive on decisions and not be afraid to delegate work. Delegation is a great tool to see what strengths their employees obtain and shows how to develop those employees so they become successful. The unmanageables would like to extend a thank you to Dr. Diasio and Ms. Weekly. We have thoroughly enjoyed this course and literally did what we originally thought was impossible. We completed a completely online course without ever meeting in person. Through your instructional videos, assignments, email communications, and help, we successfully completed this class. Thank you.